the snap. They're going to give it to Irvin. Irvin untouched touchdown. up the middle for a touchdown. Drew Irvin, third rushing touchdown of the game. Center takes the snap. He's looking to pass it. The design quarterback run. He keeps now out across the 20 to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Cole Benner. They give it up to Smith, and there's a fumble. Ball's on the ground. Otterbein has it. Austin Jones recovers. Live from the studios of 33 College View, it's time for the Tim Dalp Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. The Coaches Show is brought to you by Westerville Automotive, Ohio Health, Roush Honda, and BMI Federal Credit Union. Now, along with head football coach Tim Dalp, here's your host, David Kender. Green standing in his own end zone. Piles, the running back behind him. First down and 10 from their own one yard line. Low snap, hands it off to Piles. Piles carries straight ahead. A big hole to run through for John Piles. He's out across the 40, across midfield. He's to the 30, to the 20, 15, 10, 5, 99 yards for John Piles, right through the heart of the Capitol defense. And Otterbein takes a 20 to seven lead. I'm just guessing, probably the longest run in school history. My apologies for losing my voice Saturday, but the Cardinals gave me a lot of reason to lose my voice. Hello, everyone. I'm David Kinder here on the Week 6 edition of the Tim Daub Coaches Show in the studios at 33 College View. Coach Daub and senior running back John Piles in studio with me, and the Cardinals beat their longtime rival, the Capitol Crusaders, 49-34 for the fourth straight year to advance to 3-2 and overall and 3-1 and in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Coach Johnny, thank you so much for joining us. Coach... I know I lost my voice Saturday, and I saw you on the sidelines. You probably did the same. Yeah, I um, was hoarse there for a while uh, going into halftime. Uh, very emotional game. Um, you know, I, it, it's it's capital, and, and there's always, you know, something that gets me fired up. And obviously this year um, it was, you know, it was the same as normal. Uh, something happened. I got I got excited. Um you know, like I told the guys, they just need to stay calm and let me handle everything, and that was our talk at halftime. John, the 99-yard run, the longest play in school history. You're forever in the record books for that play. Talk us through it. Um, really, when it all started, uh, we were, like, on the half-yard line, so all I was thinking was just protect the ball because we're that close to the goal line. You'd hate to have a turnover there and just get some yards to get us away from it so we can have some breathing room. And Kevin handed me the ball, and I seen this little sliver of light, and I just went through it. And to my surprise, there's no linebackers, and the safeties were split because I believe they were in cover two at the time. So I just took it as fast as I could down the middle, and just all I was thinking was just don't get caught, don't get caught. And about halfway through about the 50-yard line, I was thinking, man, I'm going to go all the way. I might, I like, I see the end zone, I don't see anybody else. So it was just a really great feeling because obviously I've never had – a run that long in my life I've never had something like that experience so it was a really great feeling just to be run down the middle of the field like that and just seeing the end zone 12 carries 193 yards and two touchdowns of course you're on the track team too we know you're a fast guy took you 13 seconds to run the length of the football field we know you can run the 100 yard dash faster than that Johnny come on yeah uh I think it was just a combination of you know I was missing my left arm holding the ball and then uh you add on the pads and you know, people chase me down. I had to zigzag a little bit, you know, weave in and out. So I think that that added a little bit. I'd hope without any pads when I could run a little faster than 13 seconds in a 100-yard dash. And you're running 105. You took it halfway <laughs> deep in the end zone, too. I did, so, I did. so we'll give it to you. Coach, we asked you last week if you had ever seen someone run, pass, and catch a touchdown like Cole Benner did, and you said you hadn't. Have you ever seen anyone run the length of a field for a touchdown? No, I've seen it one time um, <clears throat> when I was a kid. Tony Dorsett did it on Monday Night Football. Um, that was I'm, I've never seen anybody go 99. And I knew when I saw him crease that and come out of it and the safeties were split, you know, I knew I, I knew they weren't going to catch him. I mean, anybody that's on our, a four-by-one national qualifying team, if he would have gotten caught, would have never heard the end <laughs> of it. It would have been bad. But, uh, no, and, and, you know, I, Coach Freeze was sprinting. I mean, Coach Freeze blew by everybody. Um you know, on the sideline and that, you know, at that point we had just stopped them on fourth and goal from the one. And for us to, um, you know, give him that crease and for him to go a big, huge turning point in the game. And then obviously led into the fumbled kickoff. 
um, you know, they had a they had a bad about minute something there that, that really we took advantage of. Coach, you talked about that fourth and one stop on the goal line where they turned them away. They tried to run it straight up the middle. QB sneak, the defense holds. You got to feel like momentum really changed at that point. Oh, that, there was no doubt. Um, you know, they, they ran out of bounds. They got it to the one. Um, and then I looked at their coaches. Their coaches were signaling, hurry, hurry, hurry. You knew it was coming. We just told our guys, pack inside, root hog, um, you know, stop the quarterback sneak. And, you know, our guys even – I thought maybe he was in, but the guys on the field knew right away. I mean, he was not even he, – he went – just put his head down and he fell on top of his own guy, didn't even cross. So, you know, obviously that was a huge momentum change. John, you're going to graduate undefeated, untied against Capital in your career. Only five other senior classes all time can say that. 1930, 47, 48, 99, and 2000. What does that mean to you that the class of 2016 will graduate undefeated against Capital as well? Oh, it means a whole lot to me, especially coming from a high school. Uh, we didn't win very much when I was in high school. So um, just being able to beat your rival like that, somebody that just you know isn't always, I guess, the nicest to you when you play them. Um, it's just great to just go out and win for all four years with somebody and just share that share that moment with all my other all my other teammates that are seniors and just been fighting for four years to you know try to be the best that we can be. It's just a great great moment. Coach, you joined Wally Hood as the only two Otterbein coaches to ever start four and zero against Capital in the long history of the rivalry. What does that mean to you? Oh, I mean, you know, like I've talked about, I graduated from Otterbein. Um, it's always going to be a rival to me. You know, because I do, you know, I played in it. I understand it, um, you know, but it's not about me. It's about these these seniors. You know, that's the first thing I said after the game was held up number four, you know, because it's about them and what they've done in, in four years. And, you know, hopefully we can continue that with, you know, our other, our next senior class. But for these guys to go out undefeated is, uh, you know, that that's what I look at. It's more important than anybody, anything else or myself. You know, it's it's about these players. Not sure if you knew this either, but the victory broke the all-time series record between Otterbein yeah. and Capital. Mm -hmm. Going into the game, it stood at 43, 43, and 3, dating back to 1894. The win gives Otterbein the series lead for the first time since the late 60s. I know that's pretty special as well. Absolutely. You know, I heard that stat earlier in the week that, you know, that we were tied completely all the way across. You know, Adam Prescott actually told me that. I had no idea. Um, but, to, you know – it's huge, I think, because, you know, I think it sets a standard a little bit here that, you know, we know what it takes and and our guys got to understand. We had some guys that didn't even dress, some freshmen that showed up at the game, drove down, you know, and after the game I looked at them, I said, that, that's Otterbein Capital. Now you understand what it means and, and what it means to the coaches and the players and the community. I mean, our our crowd was great. I mean, they they were loud. Um, even being down there. So, you know, it, it means a lot, and hopefully we can keep that trend going. Very physical football game, a lot of penalty flags in it. We saw you and Coach Candito of Capital have your, let's call them, disagreements during the game. All that's healthy and a good rivalry, though, right? Well, I mean, I guess if you – I mean, you know, I, <laughs> there were some cheap shots in there, as I call them. You know, they got flagged for after the after the play, hitting our guys. Um, you know, the one I got really upset was, was, you know, our, our, our safety, Jordan Boniface, gets hit right square in the back, you know, and gets hurt. And, you know, their, their kid is holding his hands up to the crowd and pumping the crowd up when he just, you know, hurt our kid. So, you know, I, I, that set me off. And I, and I told our players, you know, let me deal with that. I will always stick up for them. And, you know, if I'm going to get tossed or get flagged, make it let it be me. But I'll never, you know, I'm going to stick up for my players and, and what I think is right, and that's why I got excited and, and came out onto the field. And, you know, um, but that, it, it just adds to it, obviously, part of the rivalry. John Coach talked about it a little bit ago. Standing room only crowd in Bexley. Seemed to be just as many fans wearing Cardinal as there were purple at the game. You guys really seemed to feed off the emotion of the crowd. Oh, yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Just in the fact that um, I don't know if, if I've really felt that much energy from an Otterbein crowd, especially with it being a way like that and just how many people showed up. And, I mean, it was just uh, a great feeling, especially like going into half with just all the, you know, the loud cheers they were given, how into the game they were. 
And then after the game, just all the clapping and, and celebrating, it was just it was amazing how into the game and how much energy they brought to the game and all the support that they gave us. It was really, really nice to have that crowd come out to Capitol in that rivalry game and just support us like that. John, another solid performance out of your teammate, senior Kevin Green, threw for five touchdowns, no interceptions. Your thought on his performance? Uh, I think he did great. Something that's really been standing out to me about Kevin is I just feel like with every game we play, he's just getting more and more confident, and he's just doing a really great job stepping up and starting to lead the offense. And I'm just really happy with, with how he's playing and the decisions that he's making out there. And, again, I can just see just the growth game by game of – just how much like better he's getting game, game by game. Every game he's making great decisions and just growing as a quarterback, and it's just r really great to see that. Defensive side of the ball, Coach Drew Irvin gets a game-high 17 tackles for the second time this year, named OAC Defensive Player of the Week. He now leads the conference in tackles with 62. Did you imagine his transition from running back to linebacker would come so natural for him? Well, it's, it's interesting. You know, his biggest asset is Drew can run. You know, he's so fast. Um, he's still learning. I mean, you know, you can see those stats and everything. Uh, but, boy, you can see in the film, you know, he's still learning. Uh, he never played there before. He's, he's five games in, and he's still got a lot to learn. But, um, you know, he runs well. He's learning. You know, he, we asked him. It was funny yesterday in film. You see Nick. Nick's about three yards from the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, you know, Drew was – five or six yards back and we're like what is going on he's like I, I was tired of getting cut you know he's just said I, I value my knees but um you know he was flying around popping people and and getting there and then Nick Toledo you know I mean Nick had 16 tackles so you know we we got the production out of those two um and that's a tough game to play in when you're all you're getting cut every play um but they did exactly what we asked them to do and you know, if your defense is run right, your, your two inside backers should have the most tackles. And with Drew with 17 and, you know, Nick with 16, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with that. Special teams-wise, you force a fumble on a punt. You're perfect on your extra points. And we saw some nice quick kicks from Kevin Green as well. Yeah. What was the grade on the special teams? Uh, it's the, uh, I would, It was an A. I mean, we won. Uh, we, we, we chart everything. And yesterday, there's 10 things that if we beat them in those 10 categories, you know, that's a great day. And we had eight of them and tied for two. So special team, we won special teams, hands down. And, and we told our guys we're going to have to win special teams to be in the ball game and win, especially with that offense. I mean, you, they, it's so hard to prepare for that offense, it's a nightmare. They're going to get their yards. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, special teams-wise, I was very, very pleased, and I would give him an A. For the fourth year in a row, Otterbein beats Capital, winning 49-34 in Bexley. When we return from the break, Otterbein returns home to take on winless Muskingum. Coach and John will break down the Muskies. You're listening to the Tim Dowd Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. Fewer than 5 out of 100 people give blood. Ever wonder why they do it? It's the one thing that we can do that we can always afford to do, and hey, you get a snack afterwards. So. Snacks are great. I had never knew my blood type, and I found out in doing this that I'm O negative, so there's that added pressure knowing that everyone can use my blood at any time, and so I feel like uh, it's my responsibility. It's a little extra bragging power, too, knowing that you're a universal giver. Yeah, I'm pretty special. <laughs> Call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org to make an appointment today. Hi, I'm Cole Benner, senior wide receiver, and you're listening to the Tim Daup Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. Miss anything from today's show? You can listen to every episode on WOBN's YouTube page. Hey, Cardinal fans, Otterbein Athletics on the radio is brought to you in part by Westerville Automotive. Serving the Westerville area for 20 years, they have two locations on Westerville Road and in the Uptown area, just seconds away from Otterbein on Main Street. They're on the web at westervilleautomotive.com. You can follow them on Facebook at Westerville Automotive Uptown or call them at 614-890-6700. That's Westerville Automotive. I used to be one of those irresponsible guys, always goofing off and acting like a real jerk. Girls wouldn't give me the time of day. Hey, Julie, do you have the time? Shut up. Then, 30 days before my 18th birthday, I went down to my local post office and registered with Selected Service overnight. I became aware of the man I had suddenly become, eligible for federal student loans, government jobs, and job training, responsible and mature. Hi, Julie. Dinner tonight? I'd love to, Dad. So register with Selected Service. It's what a man's got to do. 
Good afternoon, I'm Alicia Lawson with your Wednesday weather update. Fairly chilly in Westerville right now. Current temperature is 57 degrees and cloudy. No chance of precipitation throughout the rest of the day. Tomorrow we'll have a high of 67 with a low of 47 and no rain. Now back to the Tim Daup Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. And we welcome you back to week six of the Tim Daup Coaches Show. Coach Tim Daup and senior running back John Piles in studio with me. And after their thrilling victory over Capitol, Otterbein will return to the friendly confines of Memorial Stadium this week to take on winless Muskingum coming into the game at 0-6 and, and winless in conference play as well. Coach, Al Logan's boys, the last winless team in the conference, but even though the wins haven't been there for them in the past few years, Muskingum always one of the most physical teams in the OAC. Oh, uh, no doubt about it. I mean, they, they are very, very physical and nothing's changed. Um, from the film we've seen, um, you know, they play us tough every year. It, it, it's, a, it's a very physical game. You know, our guys are coming from playing Capital, who is physical in, the, in their own right with all the cutting and things like that. And now Muskingum is going to line up with a tight end and a couple backs back there, sometimes three running backs. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to give us some problems. They're big up front, physical, tight ends, very physical. So, you know, it's in there. I love their backs. So it's going to be a very, very physical football game. And I know they're going to bring their A game. John, you've never lost to Muskingum, but the past two games in New Concord been very close down to the wire, and I'm sure you can agree with Coach that they're a very physical team who always plays Otterbein tough. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, they just really, I would say they probably take pride in just how physical they are, uh, just especially on defense. Um, I can just, I, I know they, they hit pretty hard, when, you know, running the ball, and so that's just something to really think about with protecting the ball and just running hard with, with how physical they are. Based on what you've seen from them and film so far this year and your past few games against them, how can we expect to see the Muskies line up defensively? Um, I haven't got to watch much, but with I, I know a lot, they kind of do a lot of different things. So I know we're mainly worried about they have that linebacker, Chaney Fulton, who's a pretty good player. And it's just important for the offensive line to just really line up against them and be physical and just kind of exploit the areas that we need to. You just talked about him, senior linebacker Chaney Fulton, all OAC last year. He's right behind Drew for the most tackles in the league. And a four-year starter, do you game plan around a guy like that or do you not worry about things like that? Uh, I feel like you do game plan around it. And you just you want to put yourself in the best situation to win. So you really have to game plan around what they're doing on defense and who they have on defense. But at, at the end of the day, you have to stick to what you know, you know, your bread and butter and just have confidence and everybody on the offense, the offensive line and everybody to block and do their job. Coach, offensively, they're a very balanced team, averaging 133 yards per game on the ground and 143 yards through the air. How are they going to line up on the offensive side of the ball? Well, they're going to, like I said, they're going to they're going to give you a couple different personnels um, and they're going to, you know, try to run the football. And then they're going to play action pass off of it. They do. They've got some great wrinkles uh, uh, of their play action pass stuff. Uh, get you leery of the run because they do do some a lot of different things and, and people go in different directions and jet sweeps options. Um, and then they'll line up and try to run it right down your throat. So, you know, they, I think they do a good job coordinating their run with the play action pass. Also, so you know, you get you got to play assignment football or you're going to get burnt. Cody Williams is back for them at quarterback, a three-year starter for Muskingum. Coach, the stats aren't really there for him this year. 21 interceptions to 10 touchdowns. But honestly, he's the most veteran quarterback Otterbein will see all year. Yeah, he scares me to death. Um, he can run the football. You know, I mean, he, there's the keeps that he does, the, some of the other stuff they do. Um, they get you going, you know, um, side to side, and then he's going to pull it and run right up the chute. Uh, he's got great feet, and, and actually, I mean, he's throwing the ball better. I've seen him really spin it this year and, um, you know, make some great throws. So he is he's much improved, um, and he's a, he's, he's a dual-threat quarterback, a true dual-threat now, in my opinion, with the way he's throwing. And, you know, we're going to have to have our A game on. 
They're winless on the year, but that can be a little bit yeah. misleading. They only lost to Capital at Bexley by three points, and then the very next week they lost by a touchdown to BW at home. So a few plays here, a few plays there, and they could have a much better record than they do. Absolutely, they're not. They're not. They're uh, they're not a typical zero and five team. I mean, they they are. Um, they're a couple plays away from having some, you know, having some wins, and. You know that's that's the biggest thing we've got to really concentrate that they are a good football team defensively they're going to smack you around um, and then offensively they're going to try to like you said be physical run downhill um, so we we've got to be ready to go I mean period you know we can't rely on you know capital weeks over and think we've got five more games to play and this is the biggest one so you know we got to refocus today and, and get ready to go. John, this is the only home night game of the year and the only true 7 o'clock kick Otterbein has all season long. Do you like playing night games more or the afternoon kicks? Um, I, I'd probably say I like playing the night games more. Uh, there's just something about being under the lights that I enjoy. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the day, football is football, and I just love playing it. So, But I, I know for me personally, it just gives uh, – some of my family more opportunity to come out with the night games, and I think that kind of adds to why I enjoy the night games a little bit more. But, uh, again, just playing on the lights, it just kind of adds, adds some energy to, to the game, which I love. I'm sure a coach's answer might be a little bit different because it gives you all day to sit around and think, and sometimes too much thinking can be a bad thing. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I typically get our guys out of bed about 9 o'clock on Saturday for a night game. I don't want them sleep until noon, and then, you know, it throws them off. So I try to get them up, and we don't do much. We just meet, walk. We'll do a little walk through, things like that, um, just to keep them on schedule because night games, waiting all day is, is rough. I would rather be up in the morning, you know, get these guys fed, get into pregame and play. But, you know, night games are fun. Um, it's a whole different atmosphere, in my opinion, you know, sort of like high school football Friday mm -hmm. nights. Um, so, you know, I, I do like night games. It's just, you know, that's the biggest thing is you come from high school. Most of the time I tell the guys you're going to be in for a shock because you're going to be playing your games during the daylight. You know, normally in high school you're playing at night. You're used to it. Um, and now it's the exact opposite. You know, normally we play during the day and then we'll have a night game every once in a while. So, um, you know, we'll just stay focused all day and, uh, you know, I'll be thinking more and more and more and make sure I don't overthink things and go from there. Last week, Coach, I asked you for the injury report, and you sort of chuckled. Is it any better this week? <laughs> There's um, that chuckle again. It, it is a revolving door. Um, I think we're going to be okay. I, I, I think we'll get some guys back that didn't play on Saturday, um, you know, with another week here to hopefully heal up a little bit more. But, um, you know, I don't I, I just never know until really like Thursdays or Fridays of, who, of who's healthy now. And we got banged up again. I mean, I know our guys are sore. I mean, they really are. You play a, a game like that. So we're going to have to wait and see. But according to Dave, you know, my head trainer, he, he thinks we'll be we'll be good to go. Otterbein and Muskingum kick off at 7 o'clock at Memorial Stadium. Hear the game live right here on 97.5 WOBN. Our pregame coverage starts at 630 with the Roush Honda pregame show. When we return from the break, there's been a lot of talk about coaches in football. They've been in the spotlight recently for a variety of different reasons. When we return, we'll get Coach Daup and John Pyle's thoughts on the greatest coaches of all time. You're listening to the Tim Daup Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. Football is a sport that unites fans, players, and coaches alike in a spirit of competition and camaraderie. Football season has come to our area, and while you're watching a game with friends or sharing in the excitement with family, be sure to celebrate responsibly. Never pick up the keys and drive if you've had too much to drink. And if you're 21, drinking alcohol is against the law. Remember, alcohol is different. Let's all work together to keep our roads and communities safe and have a winning season. Catch the Cardinals Sports Wrap with David Kinder and Elijah Gonzalez every Monday from 5 to 7. It's America's best sports talk radio show. Even Jim Harbaugh says so. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Can't, can't disagree with that. Every Monday from 5 to 7, only on WOBN 97.5. Can't make it to one of the football games this year? Well, WOBN has you covered with live broadcasts of all 10 football games this year, home and away. Join us 30 minutes before kickoff for pregame and stay with us long after the final whistle for analysis and updates on what else happened in college football. It's all right here on 97.5 WOBN and streaming live anywhere in the world on WOBN.net.
Week six of the Tim Daup Coaches Show. I'm David Kender, along with head football coach Tim Daup and senior running back John Piles. If you missed any of today's show, you can re-listen to it on WOBN's YouTube page or any show throughout the entire season. Time now for the segment of the show where we talk football not related to Otterbein. And this week, coaches were in the spotlight, whether it be for good reasons or for bad reasons. On Monday night, it was Mike Tomlin deciding to run Le'Veon Bell on the Wildcat last play of the game instead of kicking a field goal to tie the game. We also saw the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, step down midway through the season of the Gamecock season. And on a more sad note, Steve Sarkeesian being removed from USC for showing up intoxicated to a game, or even Urban Meyer deciding to run a two-quarterback system at OSU with a quarterback in the red zone in JT Barrett. So we'll talk with Coach and Johnny, their thoughts on the greatest coaches of all time. Coach, we'll start with you. Well, I, I think if you, you know, if you look at, you know, college coaches, I, I think – and, and being, you know, the Big Ten, uh, you know, Woody Hayes w- was a great coach. Bo Schembechler, I mean, th- those guys were class acts. Um, no nonsense is one thing that, you know, and I know back then you could get away with a lot more. But could you imagine some of the things that are happening today if Woody or Bo Ooh. or, you know, were head coaches at that point? I mean, it, you just didn't see that. It, it didn't happen. Um you know, and then, uh, unfortunately, I think one of the best coaches ever was Joe Paterno. I just do. Um, I know everything that came out after. But if you're looking at pure coaching, um, you know, I thought Joe Paterno was was a very good um, football coach. So, you know, there's a lot, of, a, a lot of other coaches out there. But, you know, I, I just look back on some of the things that coaches are doing today. Um, when you look back at Bo and Woody and those guys that, you know, it would be unheard of for that ever to happen back then. I mean, we're talking drinking, uh, coming to practice, um, showing up with alcohol on your breath. Uh, and now it says maybe that he was coaching with alcohol under the influence at a game at a big D1 school. Uh, I know I know you have problems sometimes, and but if that's going to happen, you cannot be around your players. You cannot be around anybody. Um, you, you just can't do it and it gives people a bad name. We touched on the college coaches. Now moving to the professionals, who would you say in the pros? Oh, jeez. Um, I'm going <laughs> to – I am I used to be a Cowboys fan, so I'm going to say Tom Landry. <laughs> I, I got to. Um, I thought Tom Landry, um, you know, same kind of class, you know, and, and things like that. So I'm going to say professional. I know there's so many out there, but uh, I'm going to say Tom Landry. Now, Johnny – who are you saying? And you can't say Coach Dalp or Coach David Smith. Who are you going to go with? Um, in all honesty, uh, I didn't grow up in a family that really watched football much. So I have came about it myself. So I didn't have the luxury of really knowing much or, or watching any like Woody Hayes or anything like that. So I would just have to pick some of the newer guys, like the, de- the guys coaching nowadays. And being Ohio State, you know, being from Ohio, Ohio State fan, you know, you got to think about Urban Meyer just with all that he's done and just, how, you know, how he's brought programs together and how he's won in the national championships that he's won. And then also just think about Nick Saban. Uh, you know, uh, he's he's done a really good job at Alabama, and I feel like he's created quite a bit of dynasty. So, again, I didn't watch college football a lot growing up, so I really don't know much about the coaches. But when it comes to uh, professional uh, – I know there's a lot of stuff going on with like Brady and all that, but I've always personally really liked uh, Bill Belichick. Um, I think that he's a good coach to put players in positions where they need to be uh, to win. I feel like I've watched uh, quite a few players go to that team that necessarily wouldn't be like the hype players, you know, that they pick, that they really wouldn't make other squads. And uh, he's really ma- uh, helped them make a name for themselves there. And uh, I feel like he don't always put up with all the – all this stuff going on. I think about when Chad Johnson was there and all that hype and he really didn't play into it. And again, I know there's just like the issues with like the Tom Brady and like all the, you know, back with Spygate and then with the deflate and all that. So, but with, without that, I really, I really like Bill Belichick. I find it interesting. All three coaches, you said no nonsense guys, Saban, Meyer, Belichick, all three guys, no nonsense, nose to the grindstone, football first, nose in the playbook kind of guys. Yeah, I, that's kind of how I am. I, I'm very dedicated to everything that I do, and uh, I don't. I'm not a big hype guy. You know, I I like getting the job done, and you know, not not about flash. It's just getting the job done and speaking through how how you play, and and doing and getting the job done. So, 
Coach Dapp, those three guys make your list too? Oh, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, they, it, if you look at what Urban's done, um, you know, mm-hmm. going from Bowling Green to Utah to Florida to Ohio State, he's won everywhere he's been. I mean, it's bottom line. You know, it, it, he, he knows how to get it done. Um, and and I, I would, you know, I would definitely put him up there just because he's gone from school to school to school and been very successful. Uh, you know, you can't argue with that. So, you know, I, I would put him up there. There's no doubt about it. Pretty good lists all around, boys. I uh, like the selections. Thank you guys for uh, joining us on the week six edition of the Tim Daub Coaches Show. We'll see you Saturday at Memorial Stadium. Best of luck. Thanks. Thanks. Otter Bynum and Muskingum kick off this Saturday at 7 o'clock. Here's the play-by-play right here on 97.5 WOBN. I'll have all the action. Our pregame coverage starts at 630. For Coach Dalp and senior running back John Piles, this is David Kinder saying so long. Until next time.